Court directs concubine wife to pay rupees 70 lakh to legal wife under tort law. Martyred Corps honored on Police Commemoration Day. And polling underway for by elections to four Assam Assembly constituencies. A very good afternoon. You're watching the news today at 1 p.m. I'm loving with you. Now let's have the news in details. In a landmark judgment, Civil Judge Senior Division Imphal East directs concubine wife to pay rupees 70 lakh to legal wife under tort law. The, the court directs a monetary compensation of rupees 10 lakh as special damages done to legal wife continuing intentional tort, causing loss of consortium, nervous shock, and also for causing mental distress to the wife. Rupees 10 lakh again as special damages for wife continuing intentional tort resulting in the lowering of reputation as a wife of a broken family in the eyes of right thinking and prudent members of the society. Also rupees 50 lakh as punitive or exemplary damages for wife continuing intentional tort to settled family. The case began after legal wife named Dr. Ranjita Atom. 41, wife of Dr. Konsum Shamsunda, 40, of Wangkai Yonglal Lairak, has prayed the court for giving judgment on commit, committing intentional tort by concubine wife named Yambem Pune, 33, establishing illicit martial relationship with Dr. Konsum Shamsunda, lawful husband of complainant, thereby causing a loss of consortium. Lawful wife has also prayed for passing a permanent injunction order, thereby from giving residents of Yambem Pune at Kambam village or elsewhere any warm reception, welcome, hospitality, companionship, friendship and personal service to her husband. The present case is one of the unique cases, particularly in the state of Manipur, in the sense that it is a suit filed by a legally married wife against the concubine of her husband claiming a handsome amount at the tune of Rs. 10 crore as damages against concubine copeled with a degree of permanent con injunction against the concubine for committing intentional torts for causing loss of consortium and mental agony. Police Commemoration Day was observed at the memorial complex of First Manipur Rifles Campus in Fall today by paying tribute to the martyrs. The event was attended by DGP of Manipur Police, LM Kaute, and other top officials of Manipur Police. As part of the program, a gun salute was offered to the martyrs. Speaking at the function, DGP LM Kaute said that being police means making sacrifices, adding that we must not forget the police personnel who had laid down life for the cause of the motherland. Kaute asserted that their courage must be always remembered. The day is observed uh, all over the country in memory of uh, the supreme sacrifice, sacrifices made by the police officers and men throughout the country. Uh, year after year, um, and it's a solemn occasion for us. Uh, that's why we have uh, organized soak parade and also uh, uh, placed uh, floral wreaths uh, on the martyr's memorial. I hope and pray for uh, the souls of uh, those martyrs who have laid down their precious lives for the country. In Juribam district, observing the commemoration day, homage was paid to the three police martyrs of Juribam who had made supreme sacrifice in the line of duty. Floral tribute was paid to the photographs of Yumnam Budhi Singh, 
Ngangom Amuyai Masing and Tangjam Birjit Singh on the occasion. Top police officials, representatives of civil society organizations and local leaders were, presented, were, were present during the program. Superintendent of Police, Juribam District, Mubi Mwerangtem, encouraged the spirit of the district police personnel while loading the supreme sacrifice made by the martyred corps. Gifts were presented to the family members of the martyrs at the event. Polling for the by-elections to the four Assam Assembly constituencies, Rangapara, Sonari, Ratabari and Janya, began at 7 a.m. on Monday. Voting will end at 5 p.m. The by-election will decide the fate of 20 contestants by 6,78,898 voters, including 3,27,803 female and one-third gender. The Election Commission has set up 830 polling stations, 202 in Ratabari, 229 in Jania, 197 in Rangapara and 202 in Sonari. The bypolls were necessitated with two sitting BJP MLAs and leaders, Palap Lochandas, Rangapara and Tapan Gogoi, Sonari, Deputy Speaker Kripanath Mala, Ratabari and Congress MLA Abdul Khalek, Jania elected to the Lok Sabha. Polling officials with e EVMs and VVPATS moved to the 830 polling stations across the full constituencies yesterday. Assam Chief Electoral Officer Mukesh Sahu appealed to all the voters to exercise their franchise to strengthen the spirit of democracy. Assam government has declared today as public holiday under the negotiable instruments and I act in the full constituencies to felicitate voting. Results of the by-election will be announced on Thursday. Campaigning for the by-polls, which ended on Saturday, witnessed all state party leaders campaigning in all the four constituencies. Let's take a short commercial break now, but coming up next, Education Minister Radhishyam launches comic textbook in environmental studies for class 3 students. ปีเคยกี่ดีคงทางคดีสิกชินิงไงกี่สิกชินิงไงงักตะนี่มาพัมมาตงคดีมาตาไอ้น่ะสิกชินดุนะตะลักลีอะดูบุมาฮุซายก
He also said that to replace boredom, the education department came up with a new innovative method to attract the students' interest of learning. The minister also appealed to every teacher in the state to come up with new innovative ideas of teaching and to implement the same in different ways for better results. Textbooks, see India ki mafam amatara taudi akhi na ahan banana. Saak thong mase sab mana material se pira kanda akhi ki akhi na thong muga aiga saak sang na thong muga adum kena niwa. Kino ka na moi di tongan tongan mong na hau na bhai na moi khalle ba atopa method apply toye ba akhi na taudi na thana aduna. Education department official like we have to learn to do the same thing in a different way. Same thing in a different way. Comic seeker mind talking na mano adu pay dringe da moi na hira mille belduga same content, same standard to the amuk madu comic to tamhala yeng maka na improvement laga di si impact si payi hai ke dumi na madu idu maki tang honest way na sincere way na tawiro hai bese magai appeal toge. The 30-member team of Friendly Environment Warriors, FEW, Juribam, who took part in Shiroi Festival at Ukru on October 17, returned to Juribam. President of FEW, K. Puna, appreciated the Forest and Environment Minister, T. H. Shyamkuma, Chief Advisor of FEW, K. Sarat Kumar Singh, Deputy Commissioner, Juribam, Mayang Langbam Rajkumar Singh, Juribam Superintendent of Police M. Mubi Singh, Additional Superintendent of Police A.K. Sadananda Singh, P.E.S.C.H. and Kame Village for extending help to FEW. Polling began at 7 a.m. today in 90 assembly constituencies in Haryana and will continue till 6 p.m. 1,169 candidates, including 105 women of various political outfits, are contesting the election. Prominent figures include CM Monohar, Lal Qatar, former CM Bhupinder Singh Huda, JJP Dushyant Chautala and INLD's Abhay Singh Chautala. Haryana's lone woman minister, Kavita Jain, was among the early voters who cast her vote in Sonipat. The BJP, led by MLA Qatar, has set a target of winning 75 seats while the Congress is hoping to make a comeback following a change in the guard in the state. Tight security arrangements have been made and over 75,000 security personnel have been mobilized for the polls. All the state police forces of the northeastern states are observing Police Commemoration Day today. Police Commemoration Day is observed on October 21 every year to mark the martyrdom of policemen killed in Ladakh in 1959 and to pay tribute to all other police personnel killed on duty during the year. On this day in 1959, 20 Indian soldiers were attacked by the Chinese troops in Ladakh, during which 10 were killed and 7 were imprisoned, and others managed to escape. Union Sports Minister Kiran Rijiju joined the nation in paying tribute to those martyrs today. He paid glowing tributes to those martyred on this day in the year 1959 and all those who laid down their lives in the line of duty. Early morning today, Rijiju joined other leaders in paying tributes at the memorial in the national capital. And now let's take another short break. Stay tuned. Prabhavati Handloom brings you special offers for Ningol Chakoba. Ningol Chakoba na lagpa sida makhal kayagi fi fanek fangbiragani. Laisabi yung palabi ahal oiraba imasing na set payaba inbayaba fizol kuding mag fangbiragani. Ngasi maglengsen bira u Prabhavati Handloom. Moirang kom sa guys amlerak machin na traga ay koy gi phone number six nine zero nine one two double six one five na traga seven double zero five eight triple zero two three da kung to bira u. Prabhavati. Welcome back. India and Pakistan have blamed each other for shelling across the line of control, the de facto border that divides the disputed region of Kashmir according to media reports. The nuclear-armed neighbours have already fought two wars and a limited conflict over Kashmir. But this year, tensions between the rivals sharply intensified. In February, India launched airstrikes against militants in Pakistani territory in response to a suicide attack in Kashmir, which killed 40 Indian soldiers. The Pakistan-based Jaish e Mahmud JEM group said it had carried out that attack. In August, India ripped, stripped the part of Kashmir it, it administers of 
adds partial autonomy, sparking sharp criticism from Pakistan. Since then, Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan has been lobbying by for international support against the move, which he has described as illegal. Delhi and Islamabad both claim Kashmir in full but control only parts of it. Pakistan says India targeted the homes of civilians across the border. A major escalation in hostilities on the border this year also threatens a ceasefire that was agreed in 2003. The latest round of shelling occurred, occurred in, yes, on yesterday in the border villages of Titwal and Tangdar in Kashmir's Kupwara district, but both sides provided differing accounts of what happened. Now we have the sports news. Season 6 of the Indian Super League begins with a lot of excitement as it is now the top division league of the country and the league stage table toppers will get a spot in the AFC Champions League playoffs. North East United FC have been handed a tough start to the season with the opening game against defending champions Bengaluru FC. It is the same team that vanquished them in the playoffs at a time when may, many believed they had done enough and could go far. Coach Robert Jarney, however, is confident of a winning start at the Sri Kantivaravi Kanti Rava Stadium in Bengaluru today. Former world number one Andy Murray, who claimed his first singles titles at the European Open since undergoing hip surgery in January, described it as one of the biggest wins of his career. Murray on Sunday defeated Switzerland's Stan Warinka 3-on-6, 3-on-4, 6x4 and immediately after that burst into tears. The 2019 Australian Open appeared to be his last as he had revealed his retirement plans due to a troublesome hip problem. However, he underwent hip surfacing surgery following the Grand Slam on January 28. On Sunday, the three-time Grand Slam champion needed two hours and 27 minutes to achieve what seemed to be the impossible, especially after his hard fought wins over Maria Skopil of Romania and Francis Hugo Humbert in the quarterfinals and semi finals. Now let's go through some of the local daily newspaper headlines. The Sangai Express. Naga strongly opposed to force union says Tuku. Ahead of final pack by month end. All parties meet scheduled on October 22nd. Palel Moray Road Ban comes into force. Suspected NSCNK cadres attack Assam Rifles camp. The People's Chronicle. Ruling MLAs dissect Rabi's deadline on Naga talks. Assam Rifle base attacked. Two civilians injured. Act East Ambition faces poor rail link roadblock. MPSC Govab hits hard, demoralizes honest officers. Guild terms settle tribe demand necessary rectification. Infall Free Press. Government of India backtracking from framework agreement, says NSCN IM. Living woman partner to pay rupees 70 lakhs to legal wife under tort law. Indigenous ornamental fishes face severe lack of breeding centers. Maitis are one of Naga tribes, says Homi Research Guild. The Morning Bell. Ruling MLAs declare stand to protect state integrity after RN Rabi October 31st deadline jolt. Yadipo councillor abducted on eve of chairperson election. Whereabouts unknown. Health Minister distributes 20,000 citronella saplings to farmers of four districts. Moray police sees contraband drug worth around Rs 19 crore. India destroys terror launch pads in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Manipur Mail. Manipur police recover brown sugar worth rupees 19 crores. Typhoon Hijibis. Death toll rises to 80 in Japan. Army chief claims of destroying camps. Car bomb in Afghanistan's Wardak province kills three cops. Before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again.
Court directs concubine wife to pay Rs 70 lakh to legal wife under tort law. Martyred Cops honoured on Police Commemoration Day. And polling underway for by-elections to four Assam Assembly constituencies. That's the end of the bulletin for the news today at 1pm. Thank you for watching.